Are we on? We're on. We're on? GDC TV? Yes, sir. Hey. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Carlton Butler, and I'm here with the Sean Jones, Mr. GDC himself. He asked me to uh, to introduce him. We want to formally introduce him to the community. You guys have known him for a long time, uh, but we wanted to take a deep dive and get an opportunity to hear in his words where he's from, what he's what he's grown here, and uh, the type of community that you guys have all grown to embrace. And I just feel honored that I've gotten to uh, to do this with you today. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you being on today. Definitely. So a little background, I met Sean uh, in Las Vegas in 2018 um, at a Grant Cardone event, 10X Growth Con in Vegas at Mandalay. And my seat was actually next to him and I didn't know him. Um, and he was showing me Shopify app with some 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 figures and numbers from this brand that he had just embarked on called GDC, Gentleman Drivers Club. And, and that's all we talked about for three days straight. Um, <laughs> so to see this brand become something so quickly uh, and, and have a movement behind it, it's, it's really awesome. And like I said, I feel honored to be able to have this discussion with you today. Um, really, let's just get to it. I want to open up with who who is Sean Jones? Who are you? How yeah, have you yeah. done this? Well, where did you come from? What is this? Sure. So it's always a always kind of a interesting question on answering who you are uh, yourself when you have to answer that question. But my name is Sean Jones. I'm from Houston, Texas. I'm 25 years old. I uh, I grew up a military brat, so I've lived in eight different states in the last 25 years. I actually had an address in eight different states, which is pretty crazy. Um, me, I grew up uh, in athletics, so I was always playing football, basketball, track, uh, boxing now is one of my pastimes, but I was always in athletics, always in sports, and the overall goal was always to be a professional athlete and uh, kind of forge my own path and my own journey. Well, uh, that didn't end up happening. Uh, things just didn't work out coming out of high school, and I ended up um, having to make a choice. I was at a crossroads. I could move to Hawaii where I did not know what was going to happen. I figured if I did, I'd probably be a beach mo. <laughs> figured I'd be on the beach the whole time, right? Um, or I could move to Texas, and it was going to be a more uh, structured environment, somewhere where I was either going to go to school, um, get a job, and really start gaining skills to be um, you know, make an impact in the world. Right. So I chose to move to Texas and, um, that is really, you know, I've always loved cars, uh, ever since I was a kid, everyone would be playing with action figures and all kinds of different toys. Uh, but for me, I was either playing a sport or I was playing with cars. You know, I was tinkering with cars. I was playing with little matchbox cars and stuff like that. And, um, anyway, going back to Texas, I uh, really got into the car community when I got to uh, Texas, started going to all the car meets, all the car shows, uh, trying to sign up for all different clubs. Uh, my first actual business was a car painting service, believe it or not. Oh, wow. uh, I painted cars, and I don't even know if I told you that or no, not. No, I did not know that. What what city in Texas is this, by the way? Houston, Texas. Houston, all right. Yeah. Houston, a very Texas. strong car culture out there. Yes, Very. Actually, that's part of the reputation of the city. Yep. Yep. So I, you know, my first business I started was painting cars, the product called Plasti Dip. I know my audience will be familiar with it, but I mean, I was doing rims, I was doing tires, I was doing entire cars, I was doing emblems, I was doing everything, you can name it. And um, that sprung from my passion for cars, as well as um, at the time, I was living with my grandparents, and my grandpa was restoring a 1972 uh, Chevelle SS, cherry red, black racing stripes, custom black uh, American racing wheels, beautiful car. And when I say restore, I don't mean like he was, you know, doing this or that, you know, small you thing. Rim. <laughs> I mean, he, we did the entire frame, redid the entire frame. Wow had to go find, uh, you know, a Chevelle frame somewhere in the city of uh, Houston in order to get it back. We had to pick, you know, the one that was in the best shape. We had to sand it, grind it down, uh, refinish it, take off the old frame, put it on the new car. It just like when I say restore the whole thing, glass, paint, everything. 
So and, yeah, you're uh, not like a car guy, like bumper stickers and third party exhaust type stuff. You're, you're talking about like we, you were like building a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that is something that's an experience that um, I really cherish because, you know, I'd always been close to my grandpa, uh, but we had never had an opportunity to uh, really work on a project that we were both very passionate about. And that gave us the opportunity to do that. And uh, it was a lot of fun. And that kind of leads me to him passing away. And at the time, I was not in a position to actually purchase that vehicle and it was sold. And that is one of my biggest regrets to this day is not being able to uh, purchase that, that 72 Chevelle mm. that we had restored. Um, ended up having to sell it when he passed away. But after that, I really dove into YouTube. Um, really, really dove into YouTube and I'd done it before, but it was for like gaming channels and stuff like that. Right. And I said, you know, if I did this for gaming, if I already have the skills and the technology and everything to do YouTube, why not take my passion for cars and do it, make a YouTube channel? So, I mean, YouTube really started taking off as, as an alternative to television in like the late 2000s. So what year was this that you started getting into YouTube? 2016. Uh, I, I've been doing YouTube since 2009, like I said, in oh, okay. various capacities. Um, um, so you you're know, like an early adopter, 2009. I mean, that's that's it's a long time ago it, relative to YouTube. Yeah, I mean, I, I always was fascinated with content creation on YouTube. I don't know why. When the platform... Uh, like I said, back in 2009 is when I started on it, and I was doing all kinds of channels, mainly gaming and different niches here and there, and uh, never took it really super seriously, but uh, was always on the platform experimenting. In 2016, um, you know, after my grandpa passed away, I really wanted to create an automotive channel on YouTube, mm -hmm. and so uh, I started doing that. I started making videos. I had a 2000 uh, Ford Mustang V6. That was my first car that I bought that was mine. Like, I, I used my own money to buy it. Um, and then after that, I had a 2016 uh, V6 Mustang as well. Ruby red, absolutely beautiful car. And at the time, there was nobody making as much content as I was on that vehicle. It was, it was, brand, it was a brand new car, even though it was a V6, and I'll get some haters for that, right? But it was a brand new car, and um, there was tons of people searching for content on that vehicle and so i just made video after video after video i mean i was dedicated like um 2016 v6 mustang gets new rims 2000 v6 mustang gets long tube headers 2016 v6 mustang gets this gets that and i mean i put a lot of money into it. <laughs> 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 a lot. For, for some free videos <laughs> well, well yeah but you know people started catching on and right. that channel has uh half a million views you know, right. and 80% uh, of YouTube doesn't do that many views. Right. You know, there's only a small percentage of channels who actually get views like that. So uh, anyway, it was it was pretty cool. And the more I did it, uh, the more that people started to take notice, started to kind of build a little bit of a following. And um, I was like, you know, what do we call this thing? I had changed my channel name probably four or five times. Right. right. And people were still finding you. I mean, half a million views. You started to build a, a community around around your your car. Yep. And it didn't really matter what the channel name was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that that's kind of where I, I sprang into being. Uh, and I don't like to call myself this, but I guess the technical term would be an authority in the space. Right. That's kind of where I got uh, my start is people finding my content on YouTube. Um, I, so. Fast forward to 2018. This is probably the, the fifth name. It's two years after having a community that people are following and you become an authority in the space, which is what everybody wants to be, right? Gentleman Drivers Club, where did that come from? So I, I remember this actually very vividly, okay? At the time, I was living in Corpus Christi, Texas. I was living in this apartment. It was Halloween night, actually. So it was Halloween night, October 31st. And I remember I had left work. Okay. I left work at probably six or seven o'clock. And at the time I didn't really have 
many friends in the area. I didn't really know too many people. And I remember everyone at work was talking about how they were going to go out and they were going to um, go to Halloween parties and drink and party and all this stuff. Right. Right. And I took that kind of, I took the, I don't know, maybe a little personally. And I went home and I was like, man, you know, I don't have any parties to go to. I don't have any friends to hang out with. You know, what am I going to do? <laughs> right? Alone with your creative thoughts. <laughs> right. I was alone with my creative thoughts. And I took that as energy. Like you would think most people would kind of be upset or mad or they would drink on their own or something. Right. I was like, no, 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 no. I took that energy and I decided to put a pen to paper and figure out, you know, what am I going to do? And that is the night that Gentleman's Driving Club LLC was formed. And Gentleman's Driving Club, the YouTube channel name switched over. And uh, essentially, the way I did it was, I was like, you know what? I've got this YouTube channel. I've got somewhat of an authoritative person in the space now. What am I going to do with it? Because I see all these YouTubers and all these personalities, and there's no substance behind what they're doing a lot of times. And so I was like, how am I going to use this to not only better my life, but better the life of my audience and car enthusiasts in general. Right. So I took a pen, took a piece of paper and I wrote down everything that I thought a gentleman's driving club would be. And I, I just started writing a couple pages later, the name actually came out. I was just writing characteristics of a car club that I would like. I didn't even know the name yet. I was just like, I want it to be, gentlemanly i want it to be professional i want it to be this i want it to be that and then at the end it was like a, it was like a hallmark movie moment right at the <laughs> end i was like what about gentlemen's driving club <laughs> what, what what was gentlemanly like what was that like your swag at the time like you were like really sharp and professional and gentlemanly yeah so and, and carlson you know me a little bit but I was the guy who would sit in a dark room with a glass of whiskey and a cigar and just people watch, just watch the whole thing full, you know, unfold. Yeah. And I, I'm, the, I'm the type of guy who, you know, The Godfather is one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay. Like, I, I'm into the mobster movies. I'm into the, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s vibe. And um, I was like, what is everything, what entails all of that kind of stuff? You know, so I was like, black, black, black's got to be the prime color. Right. Black and white got to be the prime colors. I was like, I need something that a professional would wear. I need something that, um, you know, people are going to feel cool wearing. They're going to feel stylish. They're right. going to feel like they're part of something. And um, I was like, I want this to be a club. I want it to be somewhat exclusive. And when I started to think about it, I was like, this is almost like a, um, fraternity in a way and i was like what 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 do all you know of those kind of organizations have in common when it came to logo and i was like coat of arms <laughs> wow I, I was like coat i was like coat of arms i was like that's what they have that's what all these really tight knit gentlemanly organizations have right yeah um so i was like okay coat of arms what do coat of arms have in them what does every coat of arms have in them they have an animal in every single coat of arms, there's an animal, something to represent, you know, the things behind their organization. So it's like, right. okay, I'm thinking, I'm like, what animal would be cool? A lion? No. A tiger? No. This, that, the other. I'm like, okay, I'm in Texas. If I'm building a brand, I'm here in Texas. I want to get hometown support. What are some animals that are, you know, native or known for in Texas? And I was like, what about a deer? Not just a deer. What about a stag? What about a strong, manly deer? <laughs> right. and, and literally, it's it's crazy. This whole night, right? Got that a, was one night. Yes, man. I, it was I, all one night. All right, man. I, I've got a glass of whiskey sitting right next to me. Okay, cigar in my hand, right? And I'm just brainstorming this stuff all night long, just putting it together. The wheels just turning, right? Oh, <laughs> and, they were going a thousand miles an hour. Oh yeah. And this kind of goes off a little bit further, but um, and it had been a couple weeks. But a couple weeks later, when I went to um, the print and embroidery shop to have them design the actual logo, because to this point, everything was just in my head and written in word form. I'm not an artist. I can't draw. Mm -hmm. I have no idea 
you know, I had the concepts in my head and I'm able to visualize things. But if you tell me to draw something, <laughs> it ain't going to turn out very well. So I literally, I sat with the artist and uh, he was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, look, I know exactly what I'm thinking of. I know exactly what I want. If you can, if I can sit here with you and guide you through the artwork, because at first he was like, oh, tell me what you want. And, you know, it'll be ready in three days or something. Right. I was like, I want to sit right next to you and I'm going to tell you exactly what I want. I said, this will be the easiest logo you've ever made in your entire life. He's like, okay. So I sit down next to him and I'm like, I want this to be a coat of arms. He's like, okay, most coat of arms are shields. Perfect. Let's do it. I'm like, okay, most coat of arms have, uh, you know, an animal in them. What animal do you want? I want a stag. Okay. How do you want it to look? Okay. We pulled some images up on Google, you know, took one of them and he was like, okay, we can't use this image because it's someone else's image. Right. So we, let me spruce it up. Let me do this. Let me do that. Let me do that. Boom, 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 boom. And I was like, that looks awesome. Let's do it. But let's, let's change the angles a little bit. Let's make it a little more straight edge. You know what I'm saying? So he did that. right? And I'm like, he's like, what's the name of the brand? I'm like GDC. And he's like, okay, what kind of font do you want to do? I'm like, like a college font, like, like a real blocky font, right? <laughs> finds the font. Right? I'm not going to tell you what the font is or where you can find it, but he finds the font and I'm like, okay, cool. He's like, what are your colors? White and black. I'm like, bam, there's the logo. <laughs> literally, yes. literally took 25 minutes. So you, you have a very strong entrepreneurial spirit. I mean, that, that was the first thing that I knew about you um, when I met you in Vegas. And even through this story, just hearing all those things come together so quickly and the action that you took to articulate it. Because people have ideas every day. The, the difference makers are the ones that actually follow through on those ideas. Um, and the people that, right, the people that are deficient in, you know, abilities in certain areas, they just go get people, recruit people to, to you know, fill in those areas. Yep. Who, who are your mentors? Like what, what motivates you? Yeah. Uh, b before I answer that, I do want to kind of add to what you just said. Um, I always call this the Thanksgiving dinner example. You know, you go to Thanksgiving dinner and everyone makes something, right? Everyone brings something to the dinner. You bring the turkey. I bring the stuffing. Uh, mom br brings the pumpkin pie. And um, everybody's eating, and it seems that everybody's an expert at that dish. And everyone's like, oh, my gosh, Mom, you should sell that. Or, you know, you should sell your pies, or you should sell your stuffing, or you should sell those turkeys next year. And everybody thinks that their, their recipes are great, and they are great. But the following year, nobody sold them. So it's right. like... It's the same thing with the ideas. It's like everyone has great ideas. Great ideas are easy to come by. It's the people who put the action behind them that actually get somewhere. But going back to your question about, you know, who mentored me, Grant Cardone, Ty Lopez, and a gentleman who's a little less known, uh, Glendon Cameron. You guys should definitely look him up on YouTube. Um, essentially, how I found these guys, and it was through YouTube. Like I said, I've always been big on YouTube. Uh, not just creating, but I dropped out of college about seven years ago. Okay. And college, I was never good at school. You know, I, I was always a C student. I was better at the athletics portion than the actual studies portion. And, um, so I did try college. I went for three years and, um, ultimately I decided to drop out because I was progressing more in my career than I was academically. And I knew that what I wanted to do with my life, I didn't need a degree. I knew I wanted to create. I knew I wanted to produce. And these guys showed me so many different ways to do that without a career. And they showed me so many different ways to be successful and build skill sets that were going to be more valuable to me at the time. Um, so I followed those guys for years and years and years before I started anything. So, I mean... If you want to put it that way, like I was just like a lot of people, um, because this is pre, this is definitely pre GDC, right? right? This is, um, this is like seven years ago. This is when I'm, uh, 18, 19, 20 years old. Mm. And, um, uh, I was just like a lot of 
I would say college students, uh, especially I went to community college. You know, I couldn't pay for a big, big school. I went to community college. Um, I struggled in school. I had a job making pizzas. I felt like I was destined for greatness. I felt like I could do a lot more in the world, but I didn't know how and I didn't have the skill set. So um, I worked a job as a manager and I was building those business skill sets as well as studying these guys. And um, ultimately, it kind of brought me uh, to creating General Journey Club. I really appreciate that um, that story because, because that's the place that I met you in. And even looking at you now, you, you're really majoring in creating and producing. Like Gentlemen's Drivers Club, the first time around that I saw it, you, you focused largely on apparel. Yep. How, how is Gentlemen's Drivers Club different today than it was even just two years ago? Sure. So, yeah, we, and just like you said, two years ago was the inception of the brand. But when I started it, it was created as an apparel brand. And the reason it was is because I always knew from studying those mentors I talked about was you can have a great idea, you can have a great concept, you can have a great vision, but you have to have a product to sell behind it. And this was a big thing for Grant Cardone. It's like, okay, you can create something and have a great idea, but what value can you provide to the customer embracing your brand? And for me, the value, the product was apparel. I was like, how can I get, because essentially every brand is just selling an idea. Okay. They're selling an idea and they're selling a story. So I had a story for what the brand was, but I didn't have a way to get that story in people's hands and the apparel was a way to do that. Um, but back to your question. So we were all apparel, all apparel for probably the first um, year and a half, really. And then about six months ago, I was like, okay, we've sold a lot of apparel. I mean, we we've shipped to nine different countries. We've done over 4,000 orders and we shipped it almost every single state uh, in the United States. It's like, we sold a lot of apparel. And what our customers were telling us was, we love your apparel, we love your story, we love what you stand for, but what's next? How can we get more involved? And it took me a while to figure out that question that they were asking me. I was like, you know, for every brand, you want customers who are begging to be involved, right? And for me, I was getting that, but I didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> and so, so it took me, it took me a little bit. And I was like, you know what? Gentleman's Driving Club started as an apparel brand, but it could be so much more. So now, you know, we do podcasts, we do YouTube videos, we sell apparel, we have a private Discord group where people buy, sell, and trade parts, people exchange information, people meet up and have actual car meets in different locations. So, you know, next time I'm in Miami, I can log into the Gentleman's Driving Club online cars and coffee and say, hey, who's in Miami right now and wants to meet up and G GDC drivers can interact with each other through that platform all day. So the, the story I always give is um, I'm always excited for cars and coffee first Sunday of the month, right? First Saturday of the month, right? Everybody is. Um, and then that second Saturday comes and you're a little disappointed because you're like, man, how could this Saturday top last Saturday? <laughs> right. right. You're, you're disappointed for three weeks. So it's like, how can I bring that feeling of cars and coffee, the interacting with all the car enthusiasts, the seeing all the cool cars, the being involved in all the production and everything. How can I bring that to people each and every day? And so we created the General Driving Club online cars and coffee platform. So it's like we went from just selling T-shirts to creating a whole massive online community and tons of content for our, our, our customers and our audience to uh, absorb. So it's, it's an experience. It's an experience now. Absolutely. GDC was always meant to be a community. Like yep. your, your experience on YouTube, you built a community. You came out with shirts. People wore the shirts and said, okay, what do we do next? <laughs> and yep. and now you, you have the whole community built around it. Right. That, that's awesome, man. It's really, it's really great to see the place that it's in, but as the market and as, as your fan base and as your, as the, the overall membership continues to evolve. What do you think is the, where do you see the future of GDC going? 
Yeah. So when you talk about car community, when you talk about car culture, when you talk about popular brands in the car community, um, there are a lot of individuals who get a lot of attention. But some of the brands that I see uh, are Hoonigan uh, or 1320 Video, uh, brands like that. And I want to be known as bigger than those brands. I want Gentleman's Driving Club to be bigger than those brands. And so those are really, and it, it's it's not a it's not an attack on them or anything. But I always look at successful people and successful brands, and I figure out what are they doing to get there, and how can I, um, you know, mock that? How can I model that? And so seeing what they've built allows me to try and you know, redo it to model it. And so essentially we'd love to be synonymous with anything in the car community. We want to be at every single car show, every single car meet, every single event, anything that has a tire on it, we want our logo to be on. <laughs> so like, I don't know, you know, a couple months ago we were at a car show and I was like, Hey, I was with my buddies. I was like, Hey, should I just start tagging all these cars with GDC decals? <laughs> like whatever it takes, right? Like right. <laughs> the ultimate goal is to have a GDC decal on every single car in a parking lot. <laughs> oh my goodness! World domination. World domination. But we're, um, <laughs> you know, it's it's crazy because the community, the GDC community, is so hungry. Like I give them one thing, and they're like, "That was awesome. What's next?" <laughs> yeah, that's it's, a great place to be in. But it's good because it allows us to be more creative. It allows us to always keep, you know, the juices flowing because I know that these guys are not going to be satisfied. And that those are the customers you want. You know, you don't, you don't want customers who just, you know, they buy your product once or twice and they're off to the wayside and they forget about you. You, you want customers, you want a community that's going to constantly be engaged and constantly want more. And um, you got to have the people and the infrastructure to be able to do that. Uh, like they want us to put on a car show and they want us to put an actual car show. And that sounds like, okay, it's just a car show. It's just a car me, you know, but think about it, man. You, it, it is a company that's barely two years old that started off just selling t-shirts. Now we are looking at 2020 as the year to host a car meet. Uh, like a, a car meet where we're inviting drivers from all over the world to attend. We're, we're, we're trying to book a venue. We're trying to get a DJ. We're trying to get food. You know, these are things that big, big companies do. And our community is saying, yes, we want this. And it's time to do it. It's time to produce, man. That's so many places, so many companies and places like want a following that wants more from them. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, it's uh, not everybody can produce. That's when you see those fly by night, you know, flash in the pan companies and people on YouTube, especially they'll come up, produce a couple videos and disappear. Yep. This is what happens when you commit from, from the very beginning and, and, and maintain that intensity and grow all the way through. You're really taking care of your, your customers. I think that they're just as much looking for a community to belong to um, that's going to also be consistent and it's going to be there. So that's yep. that's a beautiful thing, man. I get and, asked all the time about this uh this the state the saying on the back the what drives you. Uh -huh. Um we're gonna finish up here, but that's my last question. What drives you? Sure. What drives me is the passion that the entire gentleman's driving club community has. That's what drives me is because when I wake up in the morning and maybe I don't want to make a YouTube video, maybe I don't want to do a podcast, maybe, you know, it's the day before Christmas Eve. Maybe I didn't want to do this interview, but I know that my people are going to love it. I know that my people are expecting it and I know that the community is going to embrace it with open arms. And just knowing that gets me up in the morning. It's like, no, I have to do this. These guys are counting on me. It's almost, it's, almost, it's almost like having kids. You're like, I, I got to do it. I got to do it for them. <laughs> well, it's, 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 uh, it's a little different when, when, you know, there's an, you got an appointment with somebody like you're supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just, just this idea. Like it's, it's, it's attached to a commitment, like a real commitment. Right. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Sean Jones, GDC, Gentlemen Drivers Club, that this has been a, a great opportunity to, to learn some new things about you and um, really just continue to spread the word of GDC out to the GDC community and beyond. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity to interview you today. Hey, I appreciate you interviewing me. You asked some really good questions, a few questions that hadn't been asked before. And um, I'm hoping everybody enjoys the content and learn a little bit more about the, the creation of it. Where can they find you? Uh, Gentlemen's Driving Club on every platform, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Uh, we are at the official GDC on Snapchat. Anywhere, anywhere you can email us at gentlemen's driving club, uh, gentlemen's driving club at gmail.com. Yeah, it's not, it's not hard, to, it's not hard to find us, baby. He's everywhere, <laughs> he is everywhere, <laughs> he's everywhere. You ain't never there. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube, we talk about YouTube the whole time. Find us YouTube. On YouTube. Hey, thanks a lot, Sean. Thank you.